Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Art Battle Omaha City Championship. We have just started round number one. We have 12 absolutely incredible artists who have won across different events in Nebraska and Minnesota uh, competing tonight, and we are checking out our first six. We will have two qualifying rounds of six artists for a total of 12 artists. The top two artists as voted by the audience will move forward into a third and final round with 30 minutes on the canvas. So very, very exciting tonight. The winner of tonight's championship will actually be moving forward to the U.S. Nationals taking place on April 1st in Daytona Beach. So we are really, really jazzed to see what these guys come up with and uh, all of the art that's gonna be revealed on the canvases tonight. Right now we are looking at Jennifer Young and Jennifer is starting off with some really uh, dark teal application here and looks like she's starting with her background first which is a really cool technique often we see it the other way around that the artists are starting with their central focus and then bringing in the background so already I'm liking the technique that we're seeing from Jennifer and I gotta say I like this color as well this side uh, beautiful bluey green and it looks like this is a color that Jennifer has mixed herself as well. That's not out of the tube because we can see these varying levels of depth and color that are coming from there. Got a little bit more of kind of a cerulean tint happening uh, within the lighter areas and then some ultramarine in the darker areas that we're seeing that brushwork. Moving over to Maddie Hake, and Maddie is starting off with a super red toned canvas, and it's just looking fantastic so far. Maddie is uh, an artist who often is doing these really, really emotive portraits, so it's no surprise to me to see this level of saturation starting off her canvas. I think that we're going to get uh, something fiery for Maddie tonight. And it looks like Maddie is actually starting to execute uh, an eye drawing here. We can see that this is the central focus that she's now starting to concentrate on. Moving over to Dewan. And Dewan has this really cool intuitive style that really He's concentrating on capturing the energy of the room and of the crowd. So I'm totally looking forward to seeing how Dewan's piece evolves. Right now we're looking at um, lots of abstract painterly strokes, lots of uh, texture going on, and it looks as if he's starting to introduce some circles. Maybe, potentially, we could be heading into landscape territory with this. I'm feeling like I'm seeing a little bit maybe of uh, a waterfall or something like that emerging. It's funny with pieces that are skewed more into the abstract, your brain is always just searching for that meaning. I'm even maybe starting to see um, a figure emerge here. This is really cool. I feel like this is gonna be a piece that continues to reveal itself over the course of our next 15 minutes here. Maybe even a figure holding a jug and pouring out the jug. And here we are with Koro, and Koro is really well known for creating uh, this kind of doodly street art character. 
Uh, and we can see two characters on the canvas starting already with these big stylized features, um, these wide open, almost surprised eyes. And we can see the coral has started with marker and is now going over top of that with paint. Introducing some of that black line work. So once again, for anyone who is just joining us on the stream now, we are at the Art Battle Omaha City Championship. And one artist will be voted to represent the City of Omaha in the U.S. National Championship coming up on April 1st. So we have super high stakes tonight, and these artists are going to be giving it their absolute all. We have two qualifying rounds with six artists in each round. Top two artists from each round goes forward into a third and final showdown. So make sure that you get registered to vote at the link that is on your screen, artbattle.com slash AB2395 is where you will register to vote. And all of the pieces created tonight are also available for a silent auction. And you can uh, bid and collect these pieces at that same link. Some really interesting stylistic elements here from to one, um, especially with our one character that has their face almost like melting. Very cool. And here we are with Tay Coco. And Tay has a lot done in this piece. Uh, she's got her entire background filled out with this soft green and is quite far into her figurative painting as well. We've got a profile portrait going on and we have most of our major features in the portrait established and really Tay is just going into those details now and starting to uh, really punch in some of those highlights and lowlights and establishing the planes of the face. So Tay has done a fantastic job here in terms of time management in how this piece is going to be executed because Tay has a lot of her major components already established. So heading into the second half of our first round, it's really gonna be all about tightening those things up, uh, maybe adding in some hair and potentially other background elements, but really a lot of the heavy lifting has already been established at this point. So hats off to, Kay, to Tay. Here we are with Tamina, and wow, Tamina is also an artist who has quite a lot established. We have two figures in the center of the canvas right now. Um, looks like a mother holding her child, and they're wrapped in various colors of cloth and on this kind of plains landscape. This piece is just so, it's come together so beautifully, so quickly. We have all of these soft colors um, going on in the sky, kind of giving us this impression of sunset and then uh, the yellow balancing off of the rocks. And uh, really this, the colors in this piece are totally singing. And I think we have a lot of emotive quality going on with the figures as well. And this tender moment of the mother holding their child. Again, another instance of really savvy time management from Tamina here. Oh, and this is cool. We're even getting into the details of uh, rocks and features on the ground. And I hope that you guys just saw that because it was pretty cool. Tamina just in a very few strokes, I uh, got this cow skull leaning up against the rock. Great job there. So we now have the reveal of what Jennifer was working on. We saw her first establish her background, um, leaving a void in the center. And now we can see that she has filled that with this portrait uh, and is really working into the texture of the hair of her character right now. We often see Jennifer when she is painting at Art Battle uh, doing these portraits that have a lot of focus on hair, sometimes uh, incorporating 
typography within that and encouraging empowering messages. So I'm wondering whether or not we're going to see that uh, continued in this piece for Jennifer. The way that the paint is just shining in the light is really highlighting uh, the texture and the way that Jennifer has been able to express the curls in the hair. Jennifer now starting to go into some of the details of the face. And we've got a green going on to the eyelid of our figure here, which I think is a nice, fun, poppy color to uh, kind of incorporate into the features of this piece. It's gonna add a nice focal point for the eyes. And with uh, the shoulders and the neck, we have this red turtleneck that's very um, graphic in its execution, meaning that it's very shape-based, which I think is cool. Uh, back with Maddie, and Maddie is totally bringing it with the emotive quality of this piece. Uh, it's looking very fierce, and uh, the eye is just expressing so strongly and Maddie is working mostly in a very warm color palette as well so I'm just loving I'm always a sucker for a limited palette I love uh, seeing artists in the way that they're able to tone out colors and use it to uh, create contrast within the same color family and Maddie definitely has that talent and ability here We're getting all of these kind of stylized strokes that are adding some nice dynamic movement into the piece as well. Back with Dewan, and oh my goodness, this piece has come together so quickly. Um, I'm really loving it. We have, again, this limited palette, uh, but this time in blue. And Dewan's figure is pouring a jug of water. It looks like he's standing in water and pouring this water as well. Uh, what a dynamic pose for this figure. I don't think that this is a subject that we've seen at Art Battle before. And uh, I have to say that I'm very excited by it, especially with the level of execution where Dewan is working with these very textural strokes um, a lot of wet on wet paint that is giving uh, just such a dynamic quality here. Just getting ready to move over to Koro and see how he is continuing to execute those characters. So Koro has continued with this sharp black line work and is now adding in these little pops of color, of accent color. It looks like potentially um, a gold medal on the head of one of our characters here. And I think that Koro actually just added in a monocle onto our top character, which is really fun. There are lots of kind of little surprising Easter egg moments within this piece. I'm wondering whether or not we're going to continue seeing 
uh, additions of color within this piece or if Coro is going to uh, keep concentrated on more of these drawing elements and the black and the white. I would love to see a little bit more um, color in the background just to kind of knock out some of that negative space. Back with Tay and this portrait just continues to evolve in such a gorgeous way. Uh, Tay has now added in our hair and uh, it's just adding to the composition so wonderfully. We have that balance, uh, balancing the face, the hair, the weight of the hair, um, taking up this very central space within the composition. And we can also see that Tay is adding in these little swipes and curls of hair, which is just giving it this kind of windswept uh, energy. And this figure just has so much presence. I always uh, really enjoy seeing how artists choose to finish off their pieces in our final few minutes. We get kind of these flourishing elements and additional details as uh, for some of the artists who have managed their time really well, they have the luxury and the opportunity to add in those final, finer details. And we can definitely see that Tay has that opportunity here as well and is now working with paint markers to pop in just a few little highlights and I really set this piece off. That little moment of white on the upper eyelid of this portrait is just so gorgeous. Back with Tamina here, and this piece has just come together so wonderfully, especially with all of these additional details that we're now getting to see from Tamina. She is working uh, with this paint that's a little bit thicker and is almost drawing with it and has drawn along the different folds of the fabric. We have um, some emphasis lines in the background of the plane and uh, it's used very sparingly and it has a little bit of a glitter into it as well. So I love seeing these emphasis points glittering on the canvas, but not in a way that is overly obvious. It's this very thoughtful detail that isn't overpowering. We are heading into our final two minutes of round number one of the Omaha City Championship for Art Battle. The top two artists as voted by the audience will move forward into the final. So make sure that you get registered to vote at artbattle.com slash AB2395. That is where you will be placing your votes. And we can see Jennifer here. Uh, one moment. My mistake guys, we have updated the link that is on your screen and this one is your voting link, artbattle.com slash AB2434. Into our final minute here uh, and just continuing to see this fiery energy emerging from Madeline's piece. Just stunning. Uh, I'm loving these small moments of highlight. That's always my favorite. Uh, we've got a little bit of gloss on the upper brow bone and uh, some kind of gloss and almost like a wetness moment into the sphere of the eye. This piece is just radiating, uh, a very powerful, passionate piece.
Wow, what a powerful first round for the Omaha City Championship. Uh, so many different styles for all of these artists and everybody has totally brought their A-game. Uh, we got to see these final moments here of the empowering message within Jennifer's piece. Uh, the huge amount of passion that is just radiating out of Maddie's piece. Uh, the really wonderful contemplative moment from Dewan of the pouring of this jug is just wonderful. And from Koro, we have uh, this very intuitive drawing that is, oh, I think we have some typography in here. Give me sunshine, loving it. And from Tay, this beautifully executed portrait uh, with so many details just shining off of this canvas. And you can register to vote at artbattle.com slash AB2434. That is where you will be choosing which artist you think should move to the final round. Such gorgeous work from Tamina as well. Uh, especially with those final hits of detail in our final few minutes uh, and that little sparkle and shine. And this very thoughtful message from Jennifer. Um, again, incorporating that typography into the hair of her character and staying so true and recognizable to her style. Huge congratulations to all of the artists in round number one. We will be back for round number two in just a few minutes, just about seven or eight minutes. So make sure that you stay tuned to the stream and absolutely make sure that you get your votes in. We often are hearing that the vote counts can be really, really close. Uh, so make sure that you get your vote in because every vote truly does count.
We are just getting ready to enter round number two of the Art Battle Omaha City Championships. We have another six awesome artists getting ready to step up to the easels. These guys are going to have 20 minutes only on the clock. Uh, so get ready. In just a few moments, we will see these guys start. And the top two artists from our first qualifying round and from this round that we're about to enter will be moving forward into a four artist final showdown. The winner of the entire night will be moving forward to the U.S. National Championship taking place on April 1st in Daytona Beach. And they will be representing Omaha. So high stakes tonight. Make sure that if you're not registered already online to vote, go to artbattle.com slash AB2434, the link that is on your screen. Check, check, one, two.
we have just begun our second round for the Art Battle Omaha Championship. Once again, we have just begun our second round for the Art Battle Omaha City Championship, and these guys have 20 minutes only on the clock to go from blank canvas to incredible painting right in front of your eyes. These guys are all winning artists who have painted in uh, either Nebraska or Minnesota and have earned their way to the championship with a win or a finalist all-star status. So we have lots of heavy hitters and talent up at the easels tonight. The winner of tonight's competition will actually be moving forward to the U.S. National Championship that will be taking place on April 1st in Daytona Beach. I think that we are looking at Jeremy Hansen right now, uh, who is working on the floor and starting to use some spray paint. Um, oh man, I'm so excited. I have seen Jeremy paint a number of times in Omaha and uh, he does this really, really cool technique that I can't quite reveal yet because I want you guys to see it. It's so fun. Um, it's so totally unique and so completely his style. I cannot wait for you guys to see it. Looks like he is laying down kind of the foundation that he's going to be painting over top of. And he's got his canvas on the ground right now, which I think is uh, a great way for him to be able to control the flow of paint and uh, really get a handle on the gravity. And we can see him starting to uh, lay down some black line work. So he's got all of that wet spray paint there and now moving in with some black paint. Okay, and here we are with Anique. And Anik uh, is also another artist that I am totally thrilled by. She just does these characters that have so much attitude towards them. And uh, we can definitely see the beginnings of Anik's character starting to emerge on the easel right now. Uh, we've got some stylized eyes with these spidery eyelashes coming off already. Uh, and I think that this is already star starting to set the tone for how much presence this character is going to have. Anique has toned out her canvas with this rusty red color, and we can see that she's used quite a lot of water in this application, and we're starting to get little bits of drips. So I think that that is going to be um, some pretty cool textural components behind the illustrative drawing that she's doing on over top. And we can see that Anique is starting to uh, just put in that nose there as well and getting that kind of slight upturn. And here we are with Jasmine Lillian Butler. And Jasmine, we can see, has uh, her reference photo at the top of her easel already. And actually, the more that I'm looking at it, the more I'm realizing that I don't even think that's a photo. I think that Jasmine has painted already a miniature version of her piece for Art Battle and is working based off of that. I love that. I love uh, the commitment there. So Jasmine has already created this piece uh, and executed it on this smaller scale. So now she's just translating it to this much bigger canvas and within this time constraint. So definitely some additional challenges there, but we can see that Jasmine is very well prepared to be combating this canvas in this round. And here we are with our wildcard artist, Mia Mitchell.
and we can see that Mia is uh, working out a landscape right now and has quite a lot done for a five minute painting at this point. We've got our sky established, we've got uh, a little bit of the moon in the corner up there and we can see that Mia is now working into what I think are going to be some trees. I would love to see the addition of some uh, spattery stars within this blue color field of our sky. I think that would really just totally set it off. Getting those kind of uh, silhouettes going. And here we can see Amiya Stanfield as well. And Amiya um, is quite a young artist. I believe that she is still in high school and has been a winner and all-star at Art Battle before. And so that is quite the achievement at uh, such a young age. So congratulations to Amiya uh, for making it to the championship and displaying her courage and creativity. We can see that Amiya is uh, working on this purple mass going on right now. I think I know what it's going to be. I'm pretty used to seeing Amiya's work, um, but so I'm not going to totally reveal it to you guys yet. What do you think that we're starting to see emerging on Amiya's canvas? over with Gavin Mitchell now. And Gavin, we can see, has uh, a portrait going with uh, some stylized features in the center of the portrait, um, looking a little bit sassy here. And we've got uh, some larger components of hair uh, taking up space into the composition and really uh, establishing the presence of this character. And Gavin, we can see, is also using a similar technique uh, to Anique, where we're seeing this careful illustrative line work uh, being used in the center of the face with this black. Right now, Gavin is working into the lips of her character. back over with Jeremy Hansen here. And uh, here we are starting to see this signature Jeremy technique that I was so excited for you guys uh, to get the opportunity to check out. So what Jeremy does is he's actually picking up paint on the brush right out of the pot and he's not even touching his brush to the canvas. He's like dribbling these strings of paint over top of the canvas. Uh, and letting them fall. And they fall in this directed way where he's uh, placing them essentially. But at the same time, there's a little bit of spontaneity there and this expression of looseness. So we are just nearing the halfway mark of our second round of the Art Battle Omaha City Championship. So these guys have really established their initial concepts. They've gotten a lot of the heavy lifting done in terms of creating their main components. So now into the second half, it's really about uh, finishing what they have established and starting to add in all of those details um, and see if we have little bits of surprise that might be emerging as well. We can see Anique's character here totally coming to life uh, and 
we've got that little catch light of shine in the eyes, which is really cool. And we can see with some of these exaggerated features uh, that Anik style is really shining through. You can definitely tell that this is one of her characters uh, because the artist's hand is evident. When I say that, what I mean is uh, sometimes artists have a very specific way of how they lay down line work and it can make an artist's work very identifiable. So I can see with Anik's piece right now that we're really seeing uh, un Anik's unique style. Voting is now open for the second round of the Art Battle Omaha City Championship. Head over to artbattle.com slash AB2434 to cast your votes. The top two artists from our first round and the top two artists from this round right now will be moving forward into a third and final showdown round, this time with an additional 10 minutes on the timer for a total of 30 minutes in the final round. So make sure if you haven't voted yet in round number one, uh, and you can also vote now in round number two at the link that is on your screen. Back with Jasmine here, and uh, the fluorescence of the color is just totally jumping off of the canvas here. We're uh, really hyper-saturated in our moth, in the body of the moth, and that's being contrasted by some of these darker colors that are in uh, the background. And I actually really love the way that Jasmine is kind of trailing this blue off into the background and it's start starting to merge with a softer pink. It's giving a really nice atmosphere to the background of her moth character. And back with Mia Mitchell here, and Mia is our wildcard artist, or our wildcard artist. Often, uh, we will leave an easel intentionally open at the event so that we can invite someone from the crowd to step up to the easel and uh, show us what they've got. So Mia was brave enough today to put her name into the draw, and she got chosen to head up to the championship easels. So once in a lifetime opportunity, and Mia is uh, doing a great job. She's bouncing in some finger paint on the clouds there, getting some nice soft fluffy edges. Back with Amia here and uh, all of the shapes that we first saw her establishing on our first go round of the easels are now really making themselves apparent and we can see that Amia is uh, working on a portrait here. And the portrait uh, is very obscured by this luscious hair. And uh, we can see that the portrait is, the face is just kind of peeking through this cloud of hair. And I love that Amia has chosen this really beautiful, um, like, inky purpley color for the hair here. It's giving it lots of wonderful depth and is a great color play against uh, the warmer tones of the skin. I think my favorite part of this piece is uh, seeing the little corkscrew curls that are starting to come off. We can see one in the top corner there. Just adds that little element of whimsy. Wow, this piece from Gavin has really uh, changed a lot since we first saw it. We have now so many uh, highlights in the hair that are just giving this amazing stylistic element. Um, and we can also see that now she's starting to blend them out and make them a little bit softer too, which is just leading into the textural component of the hair here. And we can also see with Gavin's character that we have uh, some stylized elements within the center of the face as well. We've got these uh, dotted eyebrows and we have a blue sphere on in between the eyebrows there, almost like a third eye kind of situation. 
really uh, just fantastic work from Gavin here. And Gavin now is starting to add in those highlights into the face. And she's using this orangey tone, uh, which is a wonderful way to add highlights. I always really enjoy when an artist uses a lighter color of the color family that they're working in uh, to create those highlights as opposed to just white. If you get that kind of higher tone on there and then add white even on top of that right at the end, you just have so much more opportunity for depth. Back with Jeremy and uh, Jeremy's Spider-Man portrait is coming together in such a cool way, especially with his technique of dripping on the paint in this very 3D effect way. We can see that the, um, the webbing on the Spidey suit here is very, very 3D and this is absolutely such a great subject for Jeremy to use his specialized technique with. And he has such an array of tools here as well. We can see that he's got um, all of these paint stirrers. Uh, he's got spray cans there. He is just really uh, bringing everything that he can in his arsenal to the stage tonight. You know, it is very high stakes being that it is the Omaha Championship and only one of these artists will emerge victorious and will be moving forward to the US National Championship. So these guys are painting super hard. Back with Anik here. And uh, we can see Anik has now added this blue skin component onto her character. And we have three minutes remaining on the clock, just under three minutes. Uh, so these guys are really starting to get into those final, final details. We can see that Anik uh, is getting into them herself, starting to add some of these stylistic elements into the face. We can see that Anik's character, I think, is... Uh, oh, that's what the white is on the face. I think that it is some smoke that is starting to rise up from uh, the jazz cigarette, I think, that this character has. And he always gives us uh, a character with just so much attitude, and I love that her pieces uh, are so cheeky. With two minutes remaining on the clock, I want to take this opportunity to remind everyone that all of the pieces created tonight are available for silent auction at the link that is on your screen, and that's also the link that you'll be using to vote tonight. So make sure that you go to artbattle.com slash AB2434 and cast your vote. Back with Jasmine here, and the vibrancy of our moth creature here is just still totally flooring me. Uh, Jasmine has just done such an amazing job of translating her miniature reference piece that she had created prior to the event uh, and translating that into this larger canvas. She's just done such a stunning job of that um, and really did not lose any of the detail when she started going into scale. If anything, she added even more and that piece is even more alive than it is in the smaller version that we see at the top of her easel over here with our wild card and with Amia. We can see that Amia is uh, adding all of these kind of whimsical elements of florals within the hair. Just really giving us this kind of moment of softness. We have um, a contemplative kind of calm expression from the character that she's painting. back over with Gavin. Starting to get into our final countdown.
an amazing offering from these artists in the second round of the Art Battle Omaha City Championship. Uh, each of these six artists definitely brought their A-game and brought just so much creativity and intuition and narrative and concept to their work. Uh, it will be very interesting to see which artists emerge on top and make it forward into the final round. So make sure that you vote at artbattle.com slash AB2434 and help us choose who will be moving forward. The top two artists from round number one and top two artists from round number two are the ones that will be moving forward into the final, this time with 30 minutes on the clock. That's right, we'll have 30 minutes of awesome live painting as the finisher in this championship round. It's always fun to be able to see what these artists do with that extra gifted 10 minutes. It can really make a huge difference. So make sure that you are voting and helping us choose who these artists will be. Also, all of the works created tonight are available for silent auction at that same link that is on your screen. We will be back in just a few minutes with our winner announcement of who will be moving forward into the finals.
the votes are rolling in and the votes are rolling in and we are hearing that it is a tight race in round number two. So if you have yet to cast your vote at artbattle.com slash AB2434, make sure that you do so now because you will help be helping us choose the artists who are moving forward into the final. We will announce our finalists in just a few minutes as the final votes are collected.
Our winners have been announced and moving forward into the four artist final will be Tamina, Maddie Hake, Jeremy Hansen, and Anik. We will be seeing these four artists stepping up to the easels in just a few short minutes as we give them a little bit of time to prepare their new palette and get ready to take on these larger canvases in 30 minutes. So stay tuned for our final round of Art Battle in Omaha. Art Battle Omaha City Championships.
All right, we now have 30 minutes on the clock for our final round of the Art Battle Omaha City Championships. In this round, we have Tamina, Madeline Hake, Jeremy R. Henson, and Anik. Uh, these guys have earned their way via painting incredible pieces in their qualifying rounds in only 20 minutes, and now they have 30 minutes to take on these larger canvases in the final. So we have some very exciting live painting coming at you, and the top artist from this final, the winning artist of this event, will actually be moving forward to the U.S. National Championship taking place on April 1st in Daytona Beach. So it is some high stakes tonight and make sure that if you are just joining us on the stream or if you haven't registered to vote yat make sure that you do so at artbattle.com slash AB2434. Right now we are at Jeremy Hansen's easel spot and he again is working on the floor and in his qualifying round we saw him working in this really really interesting super stylized technique uh, very very unique to himself and I'm really looking forward to seeing how he pushes that technique within the final round here and how these extra 10 minutes lend itself to the execution uh, here for him. We can see that Jeremy is working again on the floor to take advantage of that extra control of uh, paint versus gravity. And right now he's working with some acrylic based spray paint. We've got tan and a red going on there. And he's starting to play with it while it's wet still with a brush which is cool. We never really see that. Usually with a spray application, that's kind of the end of uh, of that paint application. You usually don't see it sprayed and then moved around with a brush. So I like seeing that. Here we are with Tamina and Tamina uh, establishing, I think, a sky. It looks like we will be treated to another landscape based work from Tamina. Looks like she is working in that landscape orientation. So her canvas is set wide and we have the first half of the canvas covered with this beautiful, uh, looking like a night sky sunset kind of gradient. Really enjoying that kind of purpley color that's in the bottom there. And checking out Tamina now adding in some angular shapes on our horizon line here, maybe potentially some uh, mountains that we're gonna start to see emerging in this landscape. And I like that Tamina is using blue for the mountains here and just kind of picking up that color story from the top of her canvas, that night sky there and uh, really using that to contrast against the pink, but still staying very, very harmonious within this color story. Moving over to Maddie Hake. And Maddie has now toned her canvas with all of the cerulean blue. So she's probably working in an opposing color family to what she did in her first round qualifying piece with her first round qualifying piece being uh, very, very warm in its color tone. And Maddie often likes to kind of play with a limited palette. So it's no surprise to me that she's actually choosing blue now to be her major component in uh, the final round. And we can see that she also has a printed reference with her up at the easel. And uh, I think that we're gonna be getting a really wonderful portrait that is gonna emerge from Maddie's canvas. We can see that she's starting to draw in her proportions here and looks like we're getting a very close crop as well. Drawing in these uh, proportions and establishing the eyes and her first marks with, I think that is an oil pastel or a chalk pastel. And interesting that she is drawing in this lighter color over top of the blue. Uh, I think that that's a really smart technique. 
she's not bringing more dark on top of it so this is going to be very easy to layer on top of And we can see that Maddie is almost doing um, some measuring with the way that she is uh, judging distance with her strokes. We can see her uh, measuring up from the nostril to where it's going to hit in the eye. And we've got these corresponding lines that are really helping her uh, just to get those proportions very correct, especially with this super tight crop on the face. Getting those proportions correct is so important because anything that's just a little bit off is going to become obvious at that close range. Over with Anique now, and we are getting another signature character from her. Um, I'm sure that we are just going to be seeing all of these attitude elements continuing to be added in here. Loving the style of the glasses being hearts. I think that is so much fun and uh, really just emphasizes this kind of pop art element that Anik has going on within her style. I also think that maybe this uh, boxy drawing over on the side of the canvas is going to end up being a cell phone. Anik often likes to kind of play with uh, nods to 90s and Y2K culture, so uh, seeing this kind of stylized flip phone is pretty cool and I think that that's going to lend itself into the narrative of the character. And Anique has so much established already in her first eight minutes. Uh, she really has used the gift of these extra 10 minutes in the 30 minute round very wisely. It uh, has almost all of the details of her main character dealt with, um, or the main components, sorry, of her character dealt with, and now will be having the opportunity to move into those details. And Anique already starting to go into this background, loving the way that this kind of olivey green is contrasting that little hit of pink in the face. And we can see that she's starting uh, to fill in the background around the character, but we have a little uh, circle going on above the cell phone. Back over with Jeremy here, and it is now being revealed what he is working on. I think that we have a painting of a shoe here. Getting a little bit closer to Jeremy's piece. And we can see this signature uh, dragging of this super loaded up brush and seeing all of the texture that's left behind as he's placing these strings of paint. It's so fun to see him work with gravity in this way. And the consistency of the paint almost seems like sticky. I'm wondering whether or not he adds any uh, additional additives into the paint to make it behave this way because there's definitely a little bit of a change in the surface tension from how regular acrylic paint behaves. So I would love to chat with Jeremy uh, more about his style and how he gets the paint to behave the way that it is. I love watching him just flick these strings around and uh, the way that they end up looking on the canvas as if he has uh, sketched them very quickly, but they have that 3D component once you get closer. Very, very cool. Back with Tamina now, and I think that we are getting um, 
a canyon or a desert landscape, we can see that she's starting to place in the silhouette of a cactus, I believe. And the levels of contrast that Tamina is establishing here are just wonderful. We have uh, the silhouette providing that dark, stark opportunity across the or against the sky. And then we have so much wonderful contrast as well in the way that the sky reaches this lighter gradient as we get closer to the mountains and then is interrupted by the mountains and then we get darker into the foreground but we still have uh, this lighter point of saturation of this teal color in the center of the canvas there's just lots of places for your eye to fall within uh, this piece we like to call that eye bounce where your eye just has the opportunity to really move around the canvas to so many different points of interest. And Tamina is doing a really wonderful job of establishing that for us here. Getting that very careful line work into the cactus here. And we're getting the balancing of uh, both compositional components to this piece as well in that we have this line of cactus uh, descending from one side of the canvas and now we can see Tamina is balancing it out and moving to the other as well. Moving back over to Maddie Hake here, and we are starting to approach our halfway point. So Maddie uh, and all of our other competitors are almost at the halfway mark of this 30 minute final with 17 minutes remaining on the clock. We can see that Maddie has now added in um, all of these green and yellow tones over top of this blue and she's letting the blue of the background really shine through and play a big part in creating all of these mid-tones. I think that that's a really uh, good battle strategy in toning her canvas in this way because there's not a lot of negative space for her to deal with anymore at this point. Uh, and no matter how far she gets into this painting, it will have a finished quality because so much of the surface area is covered already and that blue is doing a lot of work uh, being her mid-tone. And we can see Maddie is now adding in uh, her, some stylized line work into the eyes and just kind of brushing in that brow very softly. This really nice angular curve into the top eyelash there. <laughs> Back with Anique here and we have our speech bubble girl F you. And uh, once again, I was saying that we were definitely going to be getting some surprising uh, attitude from Anique's character and we are not disappointed. Uh, we have so much going on here in this piece uh, and I think that Anik's character uh, has another jazz cigarette hanging out of her mouth um, and is chatting on the phone here and this piece just has such a wonderful sense of humor and I think that that's something that the audience is really going to appreciate as well. And even just to drive home 
that attitude, we're getting the addition of uh, a middle finger hand gesture. So really going all out with uh, this character from Anik. We have officially reached our halfway point of the final round of the Art Battle Omaha City Championship. So these guys have just 14 minutes remaining on the clock. And if you are just joining us now and are uh, looking to how you're going to vote, go to artbattle.com slash AB2434. The top artist as voted by you, the audience. We'll move forward to the U.S. National Championships and we'll represent Omaha in uh, in those championships. It's going to be majorly exciting. It's very, very high stakes tonight. Uh, and we're going to get to see who rises to the top. Back with Jeremy. And we can see that he is not wasting any time at all and is really just continuing to place these strings of paint. It's such a cool balance with Jeremy's work of uh, placement, intentional placement versus spontaneity. We have all of these thoughtfully placed strings of paint and then we have uh, strings that are coming off that are more organic that he's kind of swirled over there and whipped over there and let them fall where they may and it creates this really interesting effect of uh, this halo of organic line work that is then moving into a tighter representation in the center of the canvas for this shoe. Even just seeing him uh, pulling the paint out of the pot there was pretty cool. He's got uh, this paint stirring stick and he's dipping it in the pot and then wiggling it around at the top of the pot before he even takes it out. I guess that's how he gets the paint to go into those strings. Back with Amina here and we have the addition of many more uh, cacti. Looks almost like a family of cacti that is hanging out in our landscape here. And Tamina has just done such a wonderful job at establishing the weight of the composition within this piece. There's a lot of really good balance here, uh, but it's not overly symmetrical, which is something that I appreciate. We've got uh, the dark elements within the sky. Oh, we're getting some exciting factors here. We can see Tamina going in with her signature um, I guess you would call it puffy paint and she's just like drawing it in there and uh, these lines of paint end up being a little bit thicker and I'm wondering whether or not this is uh, lightning or if she's gonna brush this out for another texture but it's super cool and very very reflective I think that that's got to be a silver pigment in there Just adding this really wonderful element of interest into the sky. I'm wondering whether or not Tamina is going to continue bringing details uh, further into the canvas or if she's going to let that silver be the emphasis point. Maddie now adding in um, this peachy color over top into her skin tone. And we still have that blue that is shining through behind this green. And it's just really cooling down any tones that she puts over top of it. So we have a few warmer tones being introduced with this kind of peachy color. Um, and then we've got just a little tiny hit of pink in the cheek. But anything that she's layering over top of that blue is just cooled right down. So uh, we're still maintaining a lot of color harmony here. And we are now into our final third 
of the final round of Art Battle Omaha City Championships. These guys have 10 minutes remaining on the clock. So they have had 20 minutes elapsed already. That would be the usual amount of time for an Art Battle round. So they're now into their final additional 10 minutes. These canvas are a little bit larger as well. So uh, fairly significant to take on. So these guys are definitely taking advantage of this additional time. Seeing Maddie adding in uh, that pinky color again from the cheek, now adding it into uh, the eyelid here. I think it's actually skewing a little bit more um, purple. I was wrong, it's not pink. It's funny the way that your eye kind of plays with colors, uh, especially when there are competing colors present. And Maddie is definitely using that kind of color vibration um, impression to deal with these colors. And she's really taking advantage of that effect here. I'm loving the nails on Anik's character here. So much style to this piece. Anik has such a unique um, ability to just really communicate her style. From the way I uh, that she does noses to the way that she executes hair. Um, Anika is very comfortable working within her characters and uh, it just seems like it really comes naturally to her. She seems very relaxed at the easel as well. And with seven and a half minutes left on the clock, I'm wondering what else Anik is going to be bringing into this composition because we already have so many interesting elements going on with our speech bubble, with our cell phone, with our uh, the super attitude coming from our character and all of the character's main features being established. And of course that uh, hand as well. I think maybe the only remaining element that I could see Anik potentially working into would be the clothing of the character because everything else is so completely well established. I'm loving that little uh, flyaway hair coming out of the part of the character. I think it's so much fun and uh, Anik just has a great ability to choose these little moments to express. Moving back over to Jeremy here, and we can see from the way that the light is cascading onto Jeremy's canvas, uh, just how much paint is on that canvas. Um, I'm wondering how long that piece is gonna take to dry, especially because uh, it seems like Jeremy has added something additional into the paint. It's uh, super, super glossy and looks like he's been able to kind of disrupt the surface tension of the paint to get it to spread in this very unique way. And I think that Jeremy has also signed his piece already, if I'm not mistaken, uh, checking out that signature in the bottom corner there. Very cool. We like to call that a brush drop at Art Battle when an artist finishes early and just kind of steps away and realizes uh, that their piece is finished because it can be very easy to overpaint a piece and potentially end up ruining it or overworking it. But Jeremy knows when his piece is finished and when he wants to step away. So respect to that. Respect to Jeremy's brush drop. 
act with Tamina here. And we can see that Tamina has added in some of that silver pigment into the high points of her cactus. And the cactus looks like it's just catching those last few rays of sunlight at the end of the day. So much of what I enjoy about Tamina's work is the addition of these last minute details. And so it's so fortunate for us to get to spend these last few minutes of the round uh, checking out how she is finishing this piece. I feel like I can see a little bit of reflective elements within the hills and the grass as well. Yeah, we can see in the hills and at the bottoms of the cactus that Tamina has added um, some additional elements of that kind of 3D puffy paint. And we can see that she's going in with a fine detail brush now and just diffusing some of those just a tiny little bit. I think my favorite part of this piece is uh, there's like two strokes of that hot pink that are existing behind the cacti and it's just creating this wonderful focal point for me that I'm really digging. And especially the way that pink plays with kind of the cobalt of those mountains. So Maddie has now added in many more colors, I think, than we were anticipating within this piece. And they're working together in this really interesting, uh, contrasting, competing way. But when I'm saying competing, I mean that in a really good way because there's um, this tension between the orange and the green and with the, com the blue underneath uh, our peachy skin tone. And uh, it's just coming together in this very interesting way. All of these colors combining and uh, just vibrating off of the canvas and creating this really interesting composition, especially with uh, the way that Maddie has chosen to express the iris of each piece. I like that we have that very unconventional eye color of this electric green. And that for her darkest darks, uh, she's not choosing black, she's choosing the darkest blue that she can. And we can see Maddie in our final minute, just adding in these last touches, these last details, um, getting in that darkest dark. Back with Anique here, and we can see Anique uh, has worked a little bit more into the clothing. We can see some yellow on the collar of her shirt that wasn't there before and also a few more highlights present within the face, um, really giving us some shine on the lip gloss of the character and reflective quality in the sunglasses.
just getting into our final seconds here before we go into the countdown. The stakes are high tonight for the Art Battle Omaha City Championship. Our final few seconds, these artists are just rushing to get those little pops in at the end. And now is the time to vote and vote for who will be the Omaha City Champion, who will be moving forward to the U.S. Nationals happening on April 1st in Daytona Beach. It is going to be a very exciting opportunity for one of these artists to represent their city. So make sure that you go to artbattle.com slash AB2434 to cast your vote. Every single vote truly does count we often are hearing uh that votes can be neck and neck so if you're having trouble choosing make sure that you just go with your gut go with your heart and pick which artist you think did the best job tonight and who you want to represent omaha we will be back very shortly with our winner announcement as the votes roll in also, all of the works created tonight are available for silent auction at the link that is on your screen. So make sure that if you've fallen in love with any of the pieces that you've seen created tonight, that you can cast your bids at that same link on the screen. We will be back in just a few minutes with our winner announcement.
And a huge congratulations to the winner of the Art Battle Omaha City Championship. The winner is Madeline Hakey, who will be moving forward to represent Omaha in the U.S. National Championships. Super, super excited and a well-deserved win for Maddie. Uh, a really amazing job by all of our artists tonight in the final. Thank you so much for your courage and creativity. Art Battle would not be what it is without you guys. If your mirror neurons as an audience member have been firing and you want to step up to the easel, Art Battle Omaha will be back in May and you can sign up at artbattle.com slash artists. So we would love to see your work. We will be back on the stream tomorrow in Dallas for another exciting event. And later on this week, or later on in our upcoming week, we will be in Toronto and then San Francisco. So make sure that you stay tuned to our streaming channel on YouTube and follow us on Instagram at Art Battle and see what all the competitions are and who all of your national championship competitors are as we lead up to the national championship. Thank you so much, everyone, and good night.